What's up guys, it's Meredith with AmericanMuscle.com and today we are checking out the MBRP Armor Pro race version cap back exhaust system with the carbon fiber tips fitting all 2015 and newer 6.4 liter Hemi Challengers. Now the 6.4 has a lot of potential in the sound department and this MBRP option will do an impressive job at opening up that system to give you the volume and rich tone that you may be searching for. Now the volume here will increase quite a bit due to the nature of the system which we'll dive deeper into Two in just a minute. So I'm gonna give it a four out of five on the loudness meter with one being stock and five being with the neighbors. Now that's gonna make it one of the more aggressive systems in the category. Now while it is aggressive and perfect for the Challenger owners who really wanna make a statement, it does still remain pretty comfortable in the cab if you want a system that's not going to be too overbearing on those longer drives. Now this is gonna have a super straightforward design considering that this is going to essentially straight pipe your 6.4 liter right after the cat freeing up all that restriction that your factory mufflers had brought to the table before. Now that smooth flow of air paired with the X pipe here will be responsible for that added loudness and a little bit of rasp for that aggressive feel. Now with the sound increase will also come a slight performance increase as well with the restriction relief being a great supporting mod for other bolt-ons. Now being the Armor Pro series, this will be made of a super high quality 304 stainless steel material that is very resistant to rust, making it great for whatever environment that your Challenger sees, no matter if you are on the coast or in the middle uh, of the country. Now this mandrel bent tubing throughout the system will also produce a smooth and direct airflow for the benefits that I listed before and will include the welded factory located hangers in addition to factory style actuators so you won't have to worry about any codes on the dash after you install this. Now at the end is where you can really see the star of the show here, uh, which is the four inch single wall angle cut quad tips wrapped in a carbon fiber for a super high performance and sharp appearance. Now compared to other MBRP series exhaust systems, this is going to be one of their premium options for very good reason, coming in at roughly $1,250. Now lining this up with all of the other choices in the category, this is gonna stick right in the middle when it comes to pricing. Now it's not gonna be super over the top when it comes to sound or some fancy features, while still offering a high quality build with high quality materials and a very aggressive presence to add to your Challenger. Now it's also going to come with a lifetime warranty from MBRP so you can count on them and put some extra trust into your investment. Now install will be a two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter and should only take you about an hour to get the job done with the right hand tools. Now speaking of the install, one of our customers here has put this on their Challenger and it's gonna walk you through what that process looks like step by step. So that is going to wrap it up for me. Let's go ahead and get into it. Equipment used for this install was a one half uh, ratchet, flathead screwdriver, three eighths extension, one quarter wrench, 13 millimeter open end wrench, eight millimeter open end wrench, 15 millimeter deep socket, eight millimeter uh, socket, a three eighths adapter for the one half uh, wrench, and a 13 millimeter uh, short socket, and also some WD-40 uh, for lubricant. So today we're gonna to be showing how to install a MBRP race exhaust system for your 2015 to 2023 Dodge Challenger. Uh, this can work for the RTs, the scat packs, or the Hellcats. Uh, mine, for instance, is actually a scat pack, so mine has the 6.4. We'll talk a little bit more of the details about that here in just a little while. Uh, but once uh, you actually start, the first thing to do is actually to get your vehicle up on a lift, or if you're like me and you don't have access to a lift, uh, you can actually put it on car ramps that will work just fine uh, if you have a jack and jack stands that would work as well uh, i just think that this is actually the best way to do it if you don't actually have uh, a actual car lift uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and apply some lubrication to all of our hangers as well as uh, our connecting bolts that go to the mid pipes up front and we'll pick up from there
before you get too far ahead, make sure you go ahead and disconnect your actuators on your exhaust. There is a little tab underneath this portion here. And what I find best to do is actually just to take a flathead screwdriver and pry up and then pull with the other side and it comes out. Make sure you do this on both sides. All right, and as we had mentioned before, make sure you're spraying all your bolts that you're gonna be loosening. Uh, before you actually do that, All right, once you've let that set in, you're now ready to begin loosening your connector bolts at the mid pipe. Uh, this is a 15 millimeter, and uh, I'm actually using a uh, half inch drive with a 3 8 adapter, just so that way I can put a little bit more torque on it. But let's go ahead and get started with getting these bolts loose. And keep in mind, you shouldn't have to reuse these, so if you want to completely loosen them off, that should be fine. Let's do the other side. And now we're on the other side, doing the exact same thing. Sometimes it's really hard to get it started. As I mentioned before, these are 15 millimeter and you won't need these particular brackets again. So feel free to just completely take them off and you don't have to reuse them. Let's move to the back and we'll work on removing the hangers. All right, so next thing we're gonna to need to do is actually disconnect our hangers uh, from the actual body of the car. We'll actually have to loosen this bolt. Uh, but before we do that, don't forget that your uh, connectors are actually attached in <coughs> to the side of that bracket. Uh, so let's take that out first before we go any further. And as you can see, the connection is right there. Alright, so once you're ready to actually get this loosened, just take it and kind of jiggle it back and forth. And then it'll come out. Alright, now we're ready to actually take the hanger bracket off. To do that, you just need to remove this 13 millimeter bolt. Uh, it is a little bit tight right here, so uh, just be patient, take your time, and eventually it will come out. Once you get it loose enough, you should be able to spin it by finger. All right, now once you have that bolt out, you just need to repeat the process on the other side. Uh, if you'll notice, there is a clip here that is actually catching. And as you can see, as you move it, it will move too. So when we go to actually drop the entire system, we'll actually just have to be mindful of that to make sure that it clears that lip. So give us a moment, we'll go to the other side. Now, folks, I will apologize for this view. It's actually quite hard to get in here, uh, but I am on the bolt, and this one's actually even a little bit tighter than the other side, uh, but it is moving, so we're making progress. And same thing, once you get it loosened, you should be able to back it out by your fingers. And once you have both of these bolts out, do not lose them as you will have to reuse them. All right, now that we've removed both of the bolts, we're actually good to go ahead and lift up the exhaust system and get it off of this clip. And once you have that off, you'll just need to repeat the process on the other side. 
All right, so one of the last things that you need to do before you're ready to actually remove your exhaust is disconnect this 13 millimeter bolt, which is located there. And I do recommend that you have a rather lengthy extension to make sure that you can get to it and get it out easily. As you can tell, once you take it out, your exhaust will drop. So just be mindful of that. Same thing here on this side. And again, once you take this bolt out, the exhaust is gonna drop. So just be mindful. And now the exhaust is free. At this point, be a good time to get you a second set of hands to help you get the remainder of the exhaust off. All right, so once you have your exhaust off, uh, here's the old exhaust all together. Here's the new exhaust, uh, just touching together. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the actuators off of the motors here and get them placed on the new pins there. To remove the nuts, you'll need to use a eight millimeter and I'm using a quarter inch drive. And don't lose these nuts, you may need to reuse them. And these do have a spring in them, so kind of just be careful once you're taking them off. And now let's do the other side. And now we can move these over to our new exhaust. All right, so now that we have our actuator ready to go on our new exhaust, and make sure that you're putting the driver's side on the driver's side exhaust, uh, passenger side on the passenger side exhaust. Uh, if you remember, we talked about the spring. It does go in these two clips. You kind of have to put it in a little bit sideways and then turn. Uh, so I'll try and make the best example out of this as I can. And you've got to catch it in the back with your nut that you had from when you originally took it off. Uh, this is a little bit of a process, but it can be done. So just take your time. Now I just got to do the other three bolts. So now once you have all of your bolts and nuts started, take your open end, eight end wrench and hold the nut on the back. Use your ratcheting eight millimeter uh, socket to tighten everything down. Be sure not to over tighten. You are connecting this to plastic, so just get it snug and you're good from there.
All right, now we have this side done, we'll just repeat the process for the passenger side. All right, now that we've got our actuator motor mounted, we just need to move our hanger brackets from here over, and then we'll work on that as well. As mentioned before, lubricant's gonna be your friend here, so just to spray a WD-40 or some other type of spray lubricant that you have will be helpful. We'll let that sit a moment, and then we'll try removing them. All right, so now we're ready to remove the bracket. Uh, the best way I find to actually remove this is to jiggle back and forth, uh, also with a pull motion at the same time to get it to come off. There's one, and there's the other. Now we're good to go ahead and replace these back on the vehicle, so let's crawl back under there and get that done. All right, so to put our hanger back up, we're just gonna bring up on the top of it, get the seat down in our slot, and from there, we install our bolt. And again, this was a 13 millimeter bolt. And by the way, these uh, hangers will only go in one way, as they do have a clip on the side uh, that is where your wire actually connects in. And you can see from the push pin here, and we'll show that in our next step. All right, once you have that uh, finger tight, Get your 13 millimeter up it in the wrench and tighten it down. And then we'll take our black push clip and set that back in on the bracket on the side. All right, let's do the other side. All right, same thing on the side. Take your bracket, set it up over inside the lip, and then take your other 13 millimeter bolt and reinstall it. Take your 13 millimeter wrench and tighten the bolt. And then also attach your actuator hookup back into the pin. All right. And even though we took the old exhaust off with the hanger still on when putting the new one on, uh, the new exhaust hangers do not have the bigger end, it just slides in, so this will not be a problem. All right, at this point, we actually need to move our hanger from the rear, and we'll show that step next. So now we have our rear hanger that goes right after the rear resonator. Uh, we're just needing to remove it from this stud here, so we'll spray a little bit of penetrating lubricant on both sides, and then we'll remove it. All right. To remove this, what I find to be the best method is actually to twist to the side and pull. And then it should come out. Let's do the same thing on the other side. One thing that I will make mention of is on your passenger side, there is a ground that is hooked up to the actual bracket. Uh, you can remove the one from the actual bracket up top if you'd like, or if you prefer to do the bottom, that's fine. Just make sure after you move this over that you do reconnect it to your new exhaust system. And like I said, just make sure you install it on your new system once you have it installed. All right, so now we're ready to reinstall our rear hanger and they will only go in one way on each side. So once you have it back where it needs to be, 
take your 13 millimeter bolt, put it back in the hole. And just get it started. You don't have to go all the way. Uh, we'll wait till we actually have the exhaust uh, in the hanger and then we'll finish that up from there. So now let's do the other side. And now we'll hang the other side as well. And again, we're not running it in all the way. We'll wait till we actually have the exhaust in the hanger. All right, so we are now at the point that we are ready to begin reinstalling our new exhaust system. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is that this uh, MBRP system does come equipped for the 5.7s, the 6.2s, and the 6.4s. Uh, if you have the 5.7, you will need to use these particular couplers that are a little bit smaller. Uh, they also come with a little bit smaller band clamp. And all the band clamps are labeled, as you can see on the side of this one, it says 2.5. If you was connected onto the mid pipe of a 5.7, you would need to use these clamps. Uh, my car has the 6.4, so we're actually gonna be using the 2.75 clamps uh, going into it. All right, at this point, we are ready to install our connecting clamps to our mid pipe. Uh, I've already got the band clamps attached as well. And the more condensed end actually needs to go on to your connecting pipe. Uh, so as you can see, this end is smaller than this end, and the smaller end uh, does need to go in to your mid pipe. And do the same thing for the other side. Now you can tighten these up. Uh, some at this point you may have to do adjustments later, so I do not recommend that you completely tighten it down. Uh, but just for the time being, these are relatively snug as they are. So we'll actually just leave them for the time being. One thing that I will mention when going to install your X pipe, the end that has more of a bend needs to be on the driver's side. So just be mindful of that. So now we're ready to install our X pipe. Make sure the most crimped in is facing towards the driver's side. And let's see if we can get this to go in. I do find that shaking it up and down and jiggling left and right does help. One thing I will mention as well, uh, make sure when you're doing your connection that you do not have any space in the gaps. All right, so next I'm actually gonna go ahead and get the pipe with the actuators put in. Uh, strictly because you can go ahead and have it in your hanger and then that way the front end is not having to hold up all the weight uh, once you actually have uh, the next pipe put in. So as I mentioned before, these do not have a bigger tip on the end so it should slide in fairly easy. that hanging for this side um, now let's do the other side and again the process will be the same on this side also by the way your actuators should be facing towards the driver's side when you're uh, reinstalling them that side installed so now we can put in our mid pipe that would also be where your mufflers would go if your system had the mufflers all right so at this point we're good to install our mid pipes that connect the tail end to the x pipe and it doesn't matter which direction you put these in both ends are the same Okay, 
takes care of this side. Next both sides. So now I've got our hanger uh, started back up, got our pipe in the hanger, and now we just need to connect these two together. As always, make sure you've got your three inch band clamp ready to go. All right, now let's do the other side. The driver's side amazingly is wanting to cooperate with me a little bit more than what I had expected. So on this side, I'm actually going to go ahead and slide the pipe in. And I've already got the hanger bracket attached. I just need to move it and get it in the right spot. And I can get the bolt started. Alright, now that we've got that done, we're good to start going through and tightening up all of our band clamps. All right, once you have everything like you want it, you are good to start tightening all of your clamp bolts. And I recommend that you tighten them down quite significantly. I forgot one of my own rules. <laughs> Make sure that you have the um, nuts and the studs uh, facing up towards the body of the car, uh, just so that way it does look a little bit cleaner and shouldn't cause an issue with bottoming out anyway, but just think it best to make it look pretty. Let's move a little bit further back. All right, and now we tighten up the back ones. Don't forget to reattach your actuators. All right, let's move further back and keep going. I'll do the driver's side first. All 
And now we get the passenger side. All right, now we're ready to install the tips. As I had mentioned before, there is a ground wire that you need to hook back up to your exhaust, so just make sure that you do that uh, and don't forget that step. All right, so we're now ready to install our exhaust tips. Uh, make sure you go ahead and have your three inch band clamp already on and then just slide it over your tailpipe. And then come over to your driver's side and repeat the same process. A little general persuasion seems to work. Right. Now you're ready to actually uh, set up your exhaust the way you want it as far as where you want your tips and then tighten up the bolts. Once you have the exhaust tip where you want it, tighten up your bolt. Now let's do the other side. All right, and once you have the other side where you want it, you can tighten up your bank clamp. Just don't let it move. So that is going to wrap it up for my review and the install of this MBRP Pro race version catback exhaust system with the carbon fiber tips fitting all 2015 and newer 6.4 liter Hemi Challengers. And you can find this right here at AmericanMuscle.com.